one in four of us will be affected by mental health at some stage in our life. So when this auditorium was full this morning, it was probably like 30 people in here roughly or so. Um, probably more like 15 and a half now or something like that. Um, so at the moment, in the last kind of 12 months, there's been 200, well, a quarter of a million people have been signed off from work due to mental health conditions. Um, 40% of the total disability benefit in this country comes from people suffering or people with mental health conditions, um, and that's the highest in Europe currently. Um, and I, I like this comparison. Um, so mental health conditions are estimated to cost the UK economy roughly £70 billion pounds a year, um, and there was a much lauded kind of um, report that came out by the Design Council last week that said the contribution of the design economy is £71.7 so I thought it's quite a nice relationship between the two. Um, of this kind of lost c capacity or lost um, ingenuity that, that exists within, within the communities. So why am I talking about this? Um, about 10, 11 years ago, um, one of, a, a very close family member um, suffered uh, a, a very large breakdown um, and was unable to work pretty much for six years. Um, he was able to return intermediately to work, but it was always triggers and, and other things at that workplace that, that meant it recessed back to a position where he was unable to. Um, and so he eventually took the brave decision of, of leaving employment um, to kind of see what, what could be done. And eventually, I can, and I can say, kind of 10 years on, he's now been in full working employment for the last four years, and um, he's doing very well. And, and a lot of that was to do with the confidence he took from finding a new vocation that was more suited to what he wanted to do and, and how, how his life needed to be. Um, but I was very aware of the effects this had on the family, the wider family, his friendship groups, but also the impact financially on um, my parents um, and also the emotional support and relationship troubles that that, that caused um, and, and, and how that affected the wider family. So in the last two years, we've been really fortunate to work with um, Mind um, and we've built a knowledge platform for them called OpenHub um, and it's given us a really kind of great insight into the amazing work that they've done across the country uh, in terms of helping um, people suffering from mental health conditions. Um, and so this kind of stimulated the idea of what can we do with data, what can we do to help people understand the, 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 the possibilities of getting back into work or helping themselves return to work. Um, and so we've come up with Plexus. Um, and so it launched today. Um, and so you can find it at plexus.support. Um, and what is Plexus? So Plexus is hopefully, at the moment, it's an aggregator of data that will help people who come to it um, find comfort, find support, um, find new opportunities, find confidence, um, find direction, and, and also potentially also find support in terms of their legal position and, and what, their, what their employer or, or themselves are entitled to currently within their situation. So it's broken down into to four main sections, um, supports and services, back to work, around you, legal rights, and there's also a registration profile within this if you want to sign up to it. So within the port support and services, um, basically this is split into two elements. It, it uses your geolocation or you can find any specific postcode you want to. Um, and you can also define a distance. Hopefully you guys can just about see searchable distance on there. Um, and what that allows you to do, it allows you to then split into that and you can pull back results based on the mind organizations around you or the NHS organizations around you. What this one doesn't show and has added been, been added literally in the last kind of six hours is that you can now filter by the, the services each local mind offer. So if you're looking for something like um, talking therapies, then you can actually refine this down to a level where you can actually target it and understand where you should be looking for support. Uh, within that, you can see the kind of information you'd find. If I can get the laser working. Just there, as you go down. Um, the second section is back to work, and what this does is, is one, of the, one of the things we found from our work with MIND um, is that it doesn't have to be necessarily a return to your employment, but it can be a return to um, the engagement that you get from being part of a community that work. So volunteering is a really good starting point. And so we've managed to pull together um, some volunteering information um, based on locality uh, and also new job opportunities within this and also a, a database of information. So everything from how to build a better CV to what an interview might be like. Again, trying to find the trigger points within the relationship um, a person with a mental health condition has to the, the process of going back into work or starting new employment. 
Uh, there's also a section called Around You, um, and this allows you to see what effect mental health conditions have in your locality. It breaks it down to show you um, current uh, disability living allowance issues or the job seekers allowance or soon to be universal credit. Um, it also shows you how many people within your area have gone back to work. So we've managed to find sources of open data um, from various places that have allowed us to showcase this in a contextual env environment around where you actually live. Um, and what we're hoping to is as we add users to this application, we'll be able to pull in direct case studies of people going back into work and showing how that can contextualize within the environment you're living in. Uh, so showing that there. Uh, and, the, and the final section there is uh, legal rights. So just in case you are in a position where you're finding yourself being uh, pushed or pulled within the, the environment you're working in, it just outlines your, your basic legal rights. It also explains what sick pay is and how long it works and what it works for in the context of this. And it also shows you helpful contact points if it's got to a relationship point where you and your employer or someone you're working with or trying to work with is, is not understanding your position and not helping you in the way they should. Um, you can register with this using Google, Facebook, and also um, sign up and make your own profile. The other thing we have done is we've made it free to access. You don't have to sign up if you don't want to, because obviously we don't want to block people straight away from accessing the information on here. So there's some of the, the bits and pieces of data that we've used. I'll get out of the way because my head's in the way. Um, so the top set, set there are, are, are various um, open data sources. The NHS was a really interesting resource in terms of the kind of things you could drill down into even down to the, the star rating of breakfast, which was quite interesting in terms of the hospital you wanted to stay in or, or use. Um, but it's been a really interesting kind of, like I said, eight, nine, ten weeks of, of trying to find data and trying to work out how that data can fit in really kind of in a positive way to, to benefit what people are trying to see and, and what try, trying to integrate with. So where are we going next? Sorry, I should have put that slide up first. Um, Centred. So this is this is where we see the second part of, of, of Plexus coming from. And so this is more of a, I don't like the phrase, um, but gamification of, of, of yourself um, and, and how you are. So what we're looking to do is um, users who register with the, with the application will be able to start selecting key metrics that are specific to them. So the four I've listed here may be environment, working hours, communication with management, and commute. Each of these will be specific trigger policies or parts upon themselves that will cause stress or cause issues to happen within the workplace environment. And so what these will do, then they'll be mapped onto your phone, and over time, they'll change, depending on your interactions with the phone and how you work with it. And so what we're hoping, hang on, that's not good. That wasn't meant to happen. That's meant to go. Hmm. OK, sorry, we've got a little bit. Let me just go back to here. So, so as, these, as these change through, users will in, interact with these elements here, and they will change in position. And what these metrics will do is eventually they will allow you to see um, what you need to do or where you need to react. So for example, if the environmental one moves, that you realize that your environment that you're actually working in isn't maybe best suited, and you need to make adjustments or elements like that. We expect there to be three ways of being able to use this. So you can use it as an individual, use it as an employer, and as, a, and as an employee within this to build a relationship so the employer understands where you're coming from. We're also hoping that this can be used beyond this, and it's not just for people with mental health conditions, but it actually can be used for the wider public because they want to actually manage their own lives and see how their relationship to stress and, and, and trigger points within their lives and how their work-life balance is, is currently situated. Um, and then the, what we think will be the really interesting part of this is that you actually be able to manage it over a period of time. So not only on a daily basis, you'll only be able to do it over seven days, over a month or three months. And it'll give you a really interesting diagnostic of how you are within your workplace and how you are with your work-life balance. Um, each of the metrics will then feed back specifically. So you'll be able to see what's going on and why it's changed and also what introductions or what things you can put into the platform to help you realign these elements and make them as strong and as, as balanced as you possibly can do. Um, as part of that, you'll also be able to get, uh, <laughs> unlock achievement badges. I'm not sure the graphics are right at the moment, but it's something that we're kind of working on currently. Um, but each of these will be tied into specific actions or, um, or, or elements that you're working on or playing with within the application. And again, each of these will be unlocked. I, I, I've been obsessed. With, I haven't got it on today, which is really ironic. But I've been obsessed with my Fitbit. And the fact that I've walked across in Serengeti is quite an interesting kind of landmark for me in terms of the way I use that kind of technology. And I thought it had a kind of really interesting um, resonance with how it could potentially work as a, a confidence booster or a relationship to how you're feeling within your employment situation. Um, 
What's next? Um, we are looking at trying to get additional investment into this. Uh, in the last few days, we found out that we've been shortlisted for the Design Council's uh, MedTech Southeast, and also uh, got interviews coming up with BGV to hopefully become part of their new cohort, if, as long as I'm not jinxing it. Um, we're intending to clear, uh, build additional clinical partnerships with, with, um, with individuals who can help us kind of inlay more con contextual information within the, the central element. Um, we're going to continue to build our user network. Um, we want to release this data as open data. So we're, what we're hoping is eventually what you'll be able to see or do is that people in the Northwest are currently struggling with environmental issues within the workplace, and it's a big trigger for why there are so many people in the Northwest currently out of work of, through mental health conditions. And we think there's some real kind of value in the data that can be generated through that. Um, and also, um, and you mentioned it earlier, we want to continue to work with mine, and we're hoping that eventually we should be able to release some open data with them within the coming months. Um, thank you very much for listening. Um, I've been Martin Valls. Cheers. Thank you, Martin. Um, Cheers. Do we have any... I just want to say, actually, um, it, we really uh, think this is a great project at the ODI, and um, you know, it just reminds you that, actually, um, the reason that we... You know, we care about um, about data, about open data. Is is you know, the benefits to people. So, um, do we have any questions? Oh, got a question. Okay. Yeah. Hi, uh, uh, Ian Powling, Universities UK. Um, just uh, interested in your your uh, the gamification app uh, element there uh, around. Um, giving feedback on the different metrics. Am, am I right in assuming that the user would have to enter data uh, in order to build that? Uh, yeah, that would, be, that would be the idea, is that, that they would pick the, they would come in, register with a profile, then they'd pick these metrics. So the four I gave were the environment, uh, relationship with management, commute, things like that. They'll have specific trigger points for their own conditions, and they'll know those. And then we'll associate metrics to those. And then what they'll be able to do is measure those over time. And so they will be a a daily or an hourly input, input from the user that will require those to kind of transition within it. No, it won't magically be able to yeah, kind of telepathically see what's going on in your brain, unfortunately. H hence the, 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 motivation, the, the, exactly, the motivation yeah. through the, the exactly, feedback yeah. and so on. Yeah. Uh, I did have another, another question about, uh, at the end there, you said about um, you know, potentially releasing uh, this kind of data in aggregate um, and to get some learning around you know, macro health issues. Uh, I mean, are there issues about um, getting consent um, to do that, um, to get your users to, you know, consent to that, to that being used in that way. Um, I hope it wouldn't be a problem, but you know, I suppose it would be a case of we put it in the terms and conditions, and you'd, you'd agree to it, or you wouldn't agree to it, and so that that would be the that would be the crux of it in terms of it would be anonymised, so it wouldn't be, you know, Joe Blogs in in Humbria or, or wherever else has, has done this, and so it would be anonymised to a point where it's just literally male, thirty-year-old living in this area, suffering from this, and has these things, and these have allowed him to go to back to work for the last six months sure. without uh, kind of condition. And so I'm only thinking, that, I mean, you know, give, given, you know, people with me mental health conditions, they're, you know, they're the understandable caution and mm. entry, uh, engaging with systems and so on, uh, and the catastrophic failure of, of the government to persuade the, the, the population to give their data to the, the GP so that that could be aggregated. Yeah. So, I mean, I think it's maybe a, no, a, a non you know, I don't think it'll be a walk of the park, but again, I'm hoping the, the benefit that they've gained from experiencing the, the knowledge that's on the app in terms of the aggregated data and also then understanding how that value is to them in terms of what it allows them to do on a daily basis and on a monthly basis. And actually, that uh, for me, it's the context in terms of the thing I saw with, with, with one of my parents is the fact that, it, that everything becomes very, very momentary. And actually, things are not as bad as you think they are. It's just you've got no context, and, and it's that inability to be able to see the context. And being able to see something over three months or a month would give that context. And I think that becomes a really beneficial tool, and I think that outweighs any potential concern over data associated with that being potentially used. <laughs>